spending with a breed of pilot and aircraft that actually prefers to operate far away from the concrete and center line. Just down the road from the main air show, there's a little gathering that most people don't know about here in Oshkosh. It's a small fraternity of pilots. They have their own little world, complete with their own air show, own air traffic controllers, even their own catering. But what they don't have is a tarmac, and what they don't need is a runway. A few miles from the masses gathered on the main field lies Sea Base 1, the official splash in site for Air Venture seaplanes. For these water birds, the lagoon provides a truly unique flying experience. A runway has a stripe down the middle of it, and that stripe is six inches wide everywhere you go. But when you're in a seaplane, every time you land or take off, you've got a different situation. On an airport, you know what your runway length is, you know the direction of it, and you maintain the center line when you're landing. But when you're coming into a lake or a river, like the outer harbor here today or something, you've got some really serious choices to make because the runway is moving underneath you, and it's bouncing up and down, and it's not going to stay still. With the addition of pontoons to the fuselage, the physics of flying in an airborne boat are drastically different. The pilot's approach to takeoff is unlike any other. On the water, you can the balancing act. We'll get the plane as level as we can because then it has that minimum amount with the uh, contact with the water. There's a lot of surface tension that holds the plane to the water, and getting it to break free is the trick. The quicker you break free, the quicker you'll accelerate. Once we get that speed, we'll just launch. The more contact with the water, the, the more um, drag we have. Just like a regular airplane has wheel drag, we have water drag. It's all fluid, air, water, it's just fluid mechanics, but there's a drag coefficient, and the, the one for water I suspect is about 10 times that of air, maybe more. Uh, we'll come up to about 50 knots, and uh, we'll get just in that sweet spot. I might rock the wings, or I'll pump the flaps, and I'll make that quick break from the water. We'll do a fast acceleration and climb on at about 75, 80 knots. The drag created makes for a wild, bumpy takeoff. While the seaplane is often limited by its cumbersome pontoons, there are some distinct advantages. This plane would be a, about 25 knots faster, which is really nice, but uh, we've got these, these 600 pound pendulums right under our, uh, our plane, and we're incredibly steady and stable. There can be some gust going on here, and we're, we're so much a smoother ride. Very often, I'm smoother than an airline. The seaplane pilot flies an entirely different craft in an entirely different world, but their dedication to their planes and love of flight is unmatched. Seaplane fly flying is, is, is really a continual education. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, but how much fun was it for the first guy who looked at the water and said, I think I can land a plane on that. That was a gutsy move. When we come back, there's much more ahead in Oshkosh, but first.